very much. I yield back my time. Thank you very much, Mr. Baird. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman and uh, Ranking Member Lucas and all the witnesses appreciate you being here today. Uh, you know, the National Academies have outlined several of the factors that contribute uh, to, success, to sexual harassment in uh, academia. Uh, these include a culture of symbiotic compliance with Title IX and Title VII, uh, where the institutions are great at checking the legal boxes, but maybe not uh, able to reduce and eliminate sexual harassment. So my question to all of you is how can we in the federal government as well as you in academia uh, ensure that with the spirit, not just the letter of the law, is being adhered to? Start with you, Doc. Mr. Newman. So I, I think um, you know one area that the the agencies you know can look at is when they do compliance reviews at universities, you know they can uh, those are pretty can be comprehensive and look at what, like best practices as well as deficiencies. But I think even more importantly, going back and looking at uh, the policies are the policies they have in place really getting at the issue. So I think that uh, that requires. Uh, an evaluation of the effectiveness of the policies. So if agencies were to do that, they may identify those things that'll, that are more useful in combating the sexual harassment issue at universities. Um, I think that the, the, again, looking at the policies at the uh, grant receiving institutions, it is what our, our report recommended, particularly around the transparency and accountability um, of policies, uh, ensuring that um, that there are very transparent policies, not only regarding uh, reporting, but also regarding um, what are the consequences for varying levels of sexual harassment if one is found in violation of policy. I think the greater the transparency, the greater the trust uh, in the organization, and uh, that is what the, the evidence supports. To, to, to build on, on those things, I would add that um, leadership, both at, at institutions where um, we continue to emphasize uh, the importance of, of this and how um, we select uh, deans and, and leaders within the university to ensure that uh, women and people of color are, are uh, more represented than they are now is critical and that the, uh, you know, you asked sort of more broadly than, than HR 36, that, that the leadership and guidance out of the federal government more broadly, including the Department of Education, would, um, would speak to the importance of, uh, of supporting universities in, uh, in, in working on this critical issue. And I, I would just point out that uh, there are other organizations that are also working on this and it would be great uh, for people in, in the government to work with those organizations. I'll give as an example of that, the AAU's Advisory Board on Sexual Harassment and Gender Discrimination, which is comprised of leaders of, of all levels at the university who encounter issues related to sexual harassment firsthand. You know, this is, they have this advisory board uh, in order to come up with new ideas, ideas for research, ideas for prevention, um, and we'll be meeting on a regular basis to come up with what we hope will become best practices. Thank you. My last question, because uh, we only got about a minute and so, uh, and I'm glad you brought up the issue about gender because as we previously noted, women hold only 24% of the STEM jobs. Uh, this creates an inherent imbalance of power in this, in this field. So my question to you uh, folks is, um, would you care to comment on if and how a change in the gender balance in STEM fields specifically one in which more women were employed in STEM careers, could contribute to decreased harassment? Well, it, our uh, report clearly states that we, uh, that the data uh, point to the male-dominated fields. Um, those that are most male-dominated are ex experience greater rates of sexual harassment. So as Dr. Morrison indicated, really diversifying not only the pipeline, but really diversifying the leadership um, is critically important uh, to uh, decreasing rates of sexual harassment.